All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we actually have really our first real pawpaws. These are pawpaws that I grew myself and uh, planted these trees here that we're looking at seven years ago. We have a Pennsylvania golden and a mango. And I have to say, it was worth the wait. Um, I don't think it would normally take this long, assuming you plant your trees in more sunlight. This is a, an extremely shady spot here, right underneath uh, two shade trees. I thought when I first planted these that that's what they needed. And that's just the wrong kind of thinking. Um, in fact, you would really prefer them to be in full sun. Um, and they'll do a lot better. They'll produce more fruit. They'll produce earlier. You don't have to wait seven years. So take my advice, learn from my mistake. Don't listen to every single person on the internet. Um, and it was worth the wait though, because I find that the flavor of these, I don't know, I, guys, I've had a lot of pawpaw. I haven't had a ton, but I would say I've had a much more than the average person. And these fruits here are, are beyond any pawpaw I've ever tried. This is a, a variety here called mango. And I'm telling you, this stuff here is incredible. Uh, this tastes better than a banana, really better than any banana I've ever had. It is quite tropical in the Anona family. For those of you who don't know what pawpaw is, they're related to cherimoyas, adamoyas, but you can grow them here in uh, as far as like, I think even zone four, maybe you might be able to get away with it. I know in zone five for sure. And they have large uh, seeds in them and my fruits this year, probably a bit smaller than they normally will be. And you know what? The trees also just, even though it's in year seven, still getting established. Uh, it probably, I would imagine maybe by year 10, I will finally realize the full potential of these trees <laughs> or at least the, the a somewhat level of maturity of these trees. That's respectable. Um, so I'm probably never gonna touch these. I'm, I'm probably never gonna dig them up, never gonna move them. Uh, I think I'll leave these trees here for as long as possible and uh, keep coming back year after year to always have myself really tasty pawpaw. Uh, let me try it here. I don't know why exactly this pawpaw is so much better than any of the others I've tried. It could be that they're perfectly ripe ripe, picked at the perfect time. I mean, that's a huge part of growing fruit. It could be that this has been a drought year, but there's almost no bitterness in this. This is all sweet, um, really good banana flavor to it um, that is obviously quite different, but it's so rich. Um, the texture's rich, the sweetness is rich, the flavor is rich. It feels so satisfying to eat this, and there is a little bit of bitterness in that aftertaste, but I'm telling you, it's almost none. And in most of the pawpaws I've eaten, it's quite a lot in some cases. And this one has a better texture. This one has um, better sweetness, better flavor, and less bitterness. I don't know why exactly that is, but this fruit, this tree is incredible. Actually, I think the one we've been harvesting, oh no. Yeah, I think this was a mango, but um, I have some PA Goldens here that are also ripe. Um, I don't know if uh, they're perfectly ripe just yet, but uh, I may have to wait a few days before I get them perfectly ripe. There is one back here that we will get to harvest that will be perfectly ripe on the tree. And I mean, what I'm doing is, some of them obviously are on the, on the ground when you come out here in the morning, but 
hopefully they don't fall off the tree. They stay on the tree for as long as possible. And then you come out here and, and they come right off the tree. And I'll show you, the, uh, the stem itself comes right off the tree or the uh, part that attaches to the fruit comes right off of the fruit. And so it's kind of like, I like to think of it maybe as like when you're harvesting apples or pears, um, when you give them a slight lift, they should come right off with very little ease. And that's been my short experience here harvesting these things. And that's when I think we should, you should be probably harvesting them. Now, if they're on the ground, I think something can happen, right? The wind, critters, uh, but most of the time, at least so far in my experience, the ones that fell to the ground, there was two on the ground this morning, they were not ripe, uh, nearly as ripe as the ones I'm taking off the tree myself. So just because it's on the ground doesn't mean it's more ripe, I think is my point. Um, but I only have at this point here, uh, mango to share on video. And then the PA Golden will have to be another time. Um, but let me show you guys some of the fruits that are on there. One of the keys to getting the, the trees established was actually mulch. So if you're not mulching your trees, that's a big mistake. And I, I have been putting down mulch after mulch after mulch, fertilizer, comfrey, you name it. I've been trying so hard to get these trees established and to grow. Uh, water is also critical, especially in these younger years. I think they're worth watering early on and they're definitely worth mulching. If you're going to mulch anything, which you should be mulching pretty much everything, this is uh, definitely one to mulch. So uh, yeah, here's some fruits in the middle. You got some down there. I would say we probably, I was surprised. I thought maybe some of these were gonna fall off the tree. And I hope maybe that we didn't have too many fruits on these trees and we didn't have like uh, maybe an overbearing problem and maybe it'll be uh, biennial next year. But you know, there's some pretty darn good fruit set. And if I touch these, they're not exactly soft just yet, but you could tell they're getting softer. They're changing color from what they were. Now, if I were to give one of these a little bit of a twist, it would come off, but you don't want to do that. You want to wait till they almost turn a little bit more yellow. Now this one here is definitely getting softer than the other one we just looked at. But um, this part right here will come right off if I kind of give this a little bit of a little bit of a tug and nothing happened. So the same thing can be said for this part up here that attaches to the branch, and so. Here's an idea right here where there was two tree, uh, two fruits on this stem, but these had fallen off and probably because of a critter or something that got to them. There's another fruit there in the center. The mango seems to be an earlier variety and uh, people have been getting pawpaws even only five minutes away from me for like months, uh, for at least a month, I should say, uh, which, um, leads me to believe that it's just a lot has to do with this shadier spot that they're in. They wouldn't ripen this late. Uh, it is September 20th, around the 15th, we started to get some fruits. But obviously I think if they were in more sun and it does obviously depend on the variety, we'd probably get some earlier fruits. Um, but in general, I cannot complain, uh, although I've waited seven years, so maybe I can complain. Uh, these are incredible. This, these fruits here are insanely good. I hope the ones that I picked or the ones I found on the ground this morning that are not ripe and didn't hang on the tree as long as they should have will be as ripe. I imagine they won't and they won't be as good. But so far, these, uh, these mango pawpaws, I'm telling you, best pawpaw I ever had, not even close. So I would say out of all the fruits I've grown, this one's right up there, guys, in terms of, you know, how good it tastes. And some people, I do want to mention one last thing. I have a little bit of an allergy problem today, guys. But I do want to mention one last thing in that some people have been uh, 
reporting, and obviously there's some science to kind of back this up, but that the there's a chemical in the anonas. Uh, I think it's called anonasay, or uh, man, what's the chemical in these fruits? But essentially, you can find it in the skin, the plant itself, the fruits, uh, probably the seeds, and so a lot of the plant you don't want to eat. Um, obviously, we're eating the fruits, but a lot of people say if you eat these fruits, it's going to potentially lead to Parkinson's or other neurological, neurosystem, nervous system problems. And because it's because of that chemical um, in the in the Anona family, I think it's Anona say. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but you can find it out easily. It's just something to be aware of. I don't think it's worth really for me at least um, worrying about until we actually have some better science to support um, something one way or the other. And uh, you know, there's a lot of weird things that went around uh, talking about how, oh, well this Paul Paul guy has Parkinson's, so clearly, you know, it must be giving people Parkinson's. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. I think everything in moderation, guys, Maybe there's a plant chemical in here that's not good, but maybe there's a one a plant chemical in here that's great. You know, I mean, in general, there are foods throughout nature that are extremely beneficial for us, and there's some that are poison. So uh, we just have to be careful. And so just as a general um, statement, you know, I'm gonna be eating as many of these as I can, and I'm not really gonna worry about it. Now, if I start to have problems like I'm getting brain fog or I'm getting other weird neurological problems after eating these, well, I'm gonna be cognizant of that and I'm gonna try to be aware and, and then maybe even limit or you know, um, not consume these fruits. But you know, things like wheat, as an example, I don't eat. So, uh, you know, there, there's going to be some level, though, I'm sure of everything that some people can handle and some people can't. So for me, I'm rather sensitive to gluten. I don't have celiac, but certainly it bothers me to enough of an extent that it's just not worth eating it. And so if Paul Paul ends up being the case, which so far there's absolutely no indicator of that, then, um, you know, that'll just have to be the case. But until then, I would just grow some pawpaw. I don't, I don't really see the big worry about all of it. It's an amazing fruit, guys. Reliable. Uh, you can't get them in the store. Waited seven years. <laughs> One of the happiest days in my fruit growing, growing career. So uh, we'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys for the next one. Take care.